when J.D. Vance was picked, it was a little bit more of a Clinton Gore thing, at least it seems to me kind of ideologically, they seemed uh, kind of uh, in more or less alignment with Vance kind of being more extreme in in sort of imagined MAGAism or what national conservatism looks like going in the future. But also he seemed like someone who could go up against Kamala Harris in a debate and maybe win because she's really talks badly in debates and in public in general. Um, now it looks all different. What is what does the Kamala Harris now being the presidential candidate and presuming a Shapiro or someone who can tie their own shoes being the vice presidential candidate? What does that make the J.D. Vance pick look like uh, to you uh, and to America? Mm. A mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, look, I mean, I I am. Um... Um, I very rarely tap my own predictions because usually my predictions are so wrong. But the day after the convention, we recorded the Chris Wallace show on CNN, and I predicted that the honeymoon for Vance may not last as long as people think, and that it may have a rockier rollout than people think. I did not mean that by Monday this would seem like conventional wisdom. I thought it was going to be a few weeks or a month or whatever. But, um, um, and I think that the, I agree with you that the, choice was a you know the cliche is a confidence pick right like these guys think they're going to win so they're doubling down on maga and all that kind of stuff the thing is though i don't think there was any real vetting thinking planning that went into this the reporting suggests if you go if you combine the maggie haberman reporting and a couple other a couple other sources basically trump was all set to pick doug burgum and Don Jr. went into a cocaine rage and went storming into his office and said, are you effing crazy this, effing crazy that? He does nothing for us. He got to go with Vance. Elon Musk dangled the prospect of giving a lot of money if it was Vance. We don't know if it was like straight up transactional or anything like that. But like there's reason there are inferences one can make. And Tucker Carlson called him up and said, um, you got to pick Vance. And by the way, you can't pick Marco Rubio because he's a neocon and neocons want to get us into nuclear war. And if you pick Rubio, that will give the intelligence services all the incentive they need to have you assassinated so they can make him president. So this does not suggest a careful vetting process where they did things like listen to his podcast appearances and said, hmm, would this be a problem? You know, um, I don't I, I'm very curious. I want to know whether or not the team, anyone on the Trump campaign went and listened to his old podcast appearances and TV appearances and said, ooh, this could be a problem or, oh, my God, this is awesome. Did you hear the thing about the childless cat ladies? That's friggin yeah. fantastic. It gets better the further away in the past it is. Yeah. yeah. And so the or did they not even bother to do any of that stuff at all? Right. And so I don't think it was like there was a lot of strategy that went into this pick. I think Trump made a glandular decision when people blew up on his face and he switched to Vance. And um, the fact that Vance's convention speech kind of sucked showed that he doesn't have a lot of great political chops because a great politician would at least know, hey, this isn't a speech for me or this, you know, like rewrite this. This isn't working, you know, like in maybe actually get some of the good stories other than my, you know, grandmother's F-bombs um, from my best selling, you know, autobiography. Uh, he did none of that. And. And he'll get better, but uh, he is the I would argue he is the worst VP pick, politically speaking, since Eagleton in 72. Um, I think that's a little hard on Eagleton. We've talked about <laughs> Eagleton because we're we're big fans of voluntary elect electroshock shock, treatment. Yes. It can be quite delightful. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, I think he's more in a Dan Quayle category or a Spiro Agnew. Yeah, but, uh, but all pick. of them provided bumps yeah. after the pick, right? The, there was there was there were political at least short term political benefits. Sarah Palin was yeah. a huge gift. Oh, she was a great pick. She was a great the, pick until on paper. later yeah. she kind of unraveled, right? But at the time, she she didn't hurt the ticket at all. I Vance love, is the first one to hurt a ticket within yeah. seventy two hours of. The I pick. love the fact that he is still doubling down on the Diet Mountain Dew joke. He is like George Costanza <laughs> with the jerk store line. Like he could be in, you know, fucking you know, the Olympic Stadium, and he does that Mountain Dew joke, and there are cricket. Even the crickets aren't chirping. 
and he'll still do it again to make sure that you heard it. Uh, he's really bad. <laughs> I think, Matt, his, uh, you know, this doesn't uh, uh, conflict with what Jonah said, but he he is a brologarch and he brought in oh, already money. Using that. Yeah, it's a good it's a good term. But he he helped get the whatever the PayPal mafia, whatever we should be calling them now, because, you know, they're not a mafia. Obviously, they're more like, uh, you know, the little rascals or something like that. But they're all in on Trump. And I think that kind of having that kind of Silicon Valley tech backing, even if they're not actually going to pay. I mean, I love the way that uh, Elon Musk immediately and publicly walked away from saying, you know, like I, I didn't pledge any money. What are you talking about? He could have shares at Twitter or something like that. Um, but um, I think that's what brought him. And what's frustrating from somebody who gives a shit about the future of the country, I wish that Trump had thought about elected or naming somebody like Marco Rubio, who I don't like, but has a story to tell about America and about the future and, you know, some sense of history and things like that. Like if if we could have somebody in, you know, among the president and vice presidential candidates who are actually talking in terms that are greater than the next six months, um, I would find that, uh, you know, a positive development. But I don't think we're going to get there. That was a clip from the latest Reason Roundtable. If you want to see more clips, go here. If you want to see the whole episode, go here. Make sure to subscribe at Reason's YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening watching or both.